man. The streets have spoken. The streets have spoken. People are numbers is low right now on on the on the channel. People are tuning out, man. I, I, it's, if it takes Kwame Brown sitting in the car and just roasting people and making niggas laugh to get people to wake the fuck up, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? But I don't know why I took this, really, for y'all to see this shit, though. This nigga been a sucker for a minute. You know Angela Rye and them got it. So people, he sends the cease and desist letter, so he basically letting it be known. He don't even want to go back. You notice he always go back and forth with people. He don't want that smoke with Kwame. You know, because he knows there's some truth behind this shit. Charlemagne actually addressed this uh, two years ago on The Breakfast Club. And that video only has 282,000 views. Why? How did this get swept under the rug? When you when you friends and you in bed real deep under the covers with certain people like Rye and Kamala Harris and all of these people, they make shit go away. But he had to address this shit. And he basically talked in circles. Yeah, listen to this. It's been a nutty three weeks. And I've learned a lot about the weight my words have, and I've been reminded about the responsibility I have to watch the way I talk about issues of sexual assault. And new files from my dismissed assault case in South Carolina were, were just released. I think they came out yesterday. And I hope this quashes whatever misconceptions people might have about the case. Um, the documents show that I did everything in my power to fully cooperate with authorities before this case was ultimately dismissed. And to be honest with you, the past three weeks has really made me regret, you know, helping to create an environment that allowed something like this to take place. Like, I'm going to forever regret that, but I cannot take responsibility. Hold up, hold up. So this is why I was saying, what the fuck is a grown man, uh, Leonard McKelvey, 42, what are you doing around a 15-year-old in, in the first place? Unless that's a sister, some family of some sort, sister... Uh, mother, you know, not mother, but sister, niece, daughter, cousin, let's just some, what the fuck were you doing around a 15 year old anyway? I'm talking about he wish he wouldn't have created that environment. Like, what the fuck, this nigga's a creep, man. <laughs> Same nigga that brought fake silicone butts and shit to the, to, the, to the office, to the show. Like, this nigga's a weirdo, bro. All the weird sex jokes he be making, talking about sucking farts out of girls' assholes and shit. Like, this nigga has been telling you how it is under wraps. Almost like R. Kelly kind of wrote about slick shit in his lyrics, they would say, or whatever. They've been telling you. You just ain't been paying attention. You know what I mean? I knew he was done when he got the, the, the turned himself orange and the boy bought himself some cheekbones. You know what I mean? When he brought them cheekbones, I said, all right, this nigga's gone. He's gone. A crime that I did not commit. But most importantly, you know, I am praying for healing for the victim. Okay, and I am committed to using my platform at God. All right, so again, what is he? Is, did he basically? Uh, this is from two years ago. This is uh, yeah, July, two thousand, uh, July twenty seventh, two thousand nineteen, to be exact, summer twenty nineteen. And he says he prays for healing for the victim. So th this girl was raped some way or another, but you ain't trying to. You, of course, he ain't gonna say he did it. Has blessed me with to do as much good as I possibly can for the rest of my life, right? And, and I don't, I don't know if I plan to make any more public public statements on this in the near future. But I just thought that was important for me to say and let everybody know that um, the, the the new files from my dismissed assault case are out there, and I'm sure that they'll hit a bunch of websites and stuff shortly, so you can you can see for yourself. Mm -hmm. This nigga's a criminal. So. Uh... <laughs> Man, like I say, I, I knew this nigga been going for a minute. Like, the, he's protected. He ain't got shit to say because he, he got too much shit to lose. He's in trouble right now. Where people are talking. People are fucking talking now. People are writing notes. People talking about, uh, there's a petition, I believe, that's going around. Like, this shit is getting, it's getting there. It's getting to that point. So, you know, he really, like I say, he wanted to attach himself to this story because it was hot. And these media puppy, Nick puppet niggas, they love attaching themselves to whatever's popping. Kami Brown been lighting the world on fire all week. So Charlemagne thought he could leech off some of that, maybe get the Breakfast Club a little rub. He came back and that shit bit him. You know what I mean? Because you just had to associate yourself with it. Because you, I'm from Monk's Corner. Dad, dad, what the fuck? He did, daddy did this and that. Unnecessary. You know, once another stupid ass decision Charlemagne made that he's gonna regret. You know what I mean? But that that video from two years ago, that that one time he did address this, 
The next day, he sent the cease and desist the letter. The next thing he's going to do is cut his comments off on Instagram. But, yeah, that he he admitted this from two years ago that, he you know, he had to speak on this. But, yeah, people didn't, you know, they this really got swept under the rug. And I'm like, and not only that, black people continue to support and watch the show. You know? But, but we got to hold ourselves accountable to a certain degree, too. Like, why the fuck did we continue watching episodes of this? They'll be like, oh, well, my favorite person. I get that. But, damn, these niggas are fucking creeps. And this shit should have been went viral. Look at how he described this shit. This will include, like, DNA testing and everything? Yes. And statements and witnesses, all that. Okay, yeah. and this also means that the case... I know he said before it won't be reopened, but this reiterates the case will not be reopened? Um. Yeah, according to the solicitor of South Carolina a couple weeks ago, she definitely said the case won't be reopened. She said that it would be unethical to reopen a case where there was a uh, lack of evidence and the victim wouldn't cooperate so yeah okay. but you know once again man most importantly uh, I'm, I'm praying for healing for the victim you okay. know and, and i and i totally regret you know creating an environment that allowed for something like that to, to take place all right well we look forward to seeing this paperwork and reading all this paperwork yeah right it wasn't y'all niggas that shit got swept under the fucking under the mattress nigga that shit been going but yeah he's this shit could be real ugly, man. I was like, I, Kwame Brown might have to fucking, I don't know. <laughs> they gonna try to take that man out, bro. I hope they don't because this nigga is telling way too much. It's just, it's so harsh and it's necessary though. It really is necessary, man. I'm, I'm with it all day, you know. But yeah, these fools like Charlemagne. Like I say, this is what these niggas do. They he bullies people all the time on the radio, and now somebody stepping to him, and this nigga quiet as a mouse. He quiet as cat, you know, because he knows there's some truth behind that shit. Even if he's not gonna admit it, it's got to be some truth around this shit. Two thousand one, McKelvey was charged with criminal sexual conduct with a minor after a fifteen after a fifteen year old daughter, girl accused him of drugging and having sexual intercourse with her. He denied having sex. So in 2001, he was like 20, 21. So yeah, this is not really that far-fetched from believability to me. This was happening in 2001. He, he would have been 20 years old. So yeah, and the case can't be reopened. But yet he's sending uh, cease and desist letters. This nigga scared. There's some truth behind this shit. The case cannot be reopened. But yet you sit in fucking cease and desist Cause don't he got a deal recently with Comedy Central? You know, I mean, he got a lot of shit going on right now. He got a lot to lose. He really in bed deep with these crackers. Yeah, he got the Comedy Central deal. Well, it was supposed to come out. I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> I guess that didn't come out. He's been trying to be a TV star for a long time. Excuse me, it just hasn't happened. That's why he went and got the face, you know, bleached and all of that. And, you know, he went and got the cheekbones and bought the eyebrows and all of that. The facelift, all of that was for the, the visual opportunities. He's had the opportunities. He just hasn't been able to have that hit show. It just hasn't come, hasn't, hasn't crossed over yet. But, uh, yeah, this is what happens. He wanted to be the black Howard Stern and all of this shit. Go all out. Now you got you to gotta live with shit like this. But yeah, this is from 2001. Charlemagne know he got some guilty. He got that guilty look on his face. You can tell he, that nigga looked guilty, man. He, well, he gonna show up on the Breakfast Club Monday with, with, with his head bowed down, with his hat over his head, looking all sad. Like, he gonna have to say something about this. Because he can't, he calls himself an advocate for truth and all this shit. And, you know, why are we gonna say the lie's more entertaining? Nah, nigga, tell the truth. But you can't tell the truth because you know everything you got is going to fucking crumble on some sealy shit. Let me know what y'all think about this, man. Like that shit. Fuck with me.